In the programme today, the fly tippers of Lewisham are proving tiresome. You, you just have to clear it. Otherwise, the kids will set them alight and wall up. Preston litterbugs, watch out. Techno Tommy's about. You've got them with the main thing. Here's the head camera. If I choose or need to issue a fixed penalty, I've now got evidence of the person dropping that litter. Oh, there. And in an abandoned council house, there's a mystery. Got a missing, do missing door again. What did he do with these doors? It's hard. In Gloucester, a council house has become vacant, which means a new tenant can move in, but only if the property is in a fit state. Andy Whitewood is the inspector who will make that decision. Oh, yeah. It isn't hard. So, uh, what are you walking? Gosh, where do you start? God, yeah. So, what's the story here? All we know about this property is that it's, it's a couple that have split up for whatever reasons, um, and then it just seems to have been left. And uh, they've just taken what they want and left the rest for us to clear up. Not only is the property far from habitable, but it could be a health hazard. Yeah, there's uh, some sort of I don't know, oops, chemical. And it's acetic acid. Whoever lived here has left personal items too. Oh dear, yeah. Standing up. A personal photograph of someone. But that's a tragedy. People just leave everything. Photographs, photograph albums. It's one of the things when you come into a property like this, you're picking over people's personal lives, you know. When Andy explores the next room, he concludes it was once a kitchen. Strange that you get so much left in, you know. That's well past its sell by date. It's a uh, car radio cassette. That's where age comes in handy. You can identify a radio cassette. Oh dear. Upstairs, the going gets even worse. That's going to be a good one. Really, with a room like that, you can't tell what's in there until you start to clear it. Is there anything in this cupboard? No. no, just a few. Yeah. Handbags. Got a missing, do, missing door again. What did they do with these doors? That's all. Andy must be careful. There could be contaminated needles here. It's strange. You never know what you're dealing with. Uh, we might need to get a specialist team in to do a drug sweep, uh, a needle sweep, on a property. Um, the thing you've got to be careful of. The most inoffensive looking stuff, like a bundle of clothing, is the worst stuff, because if you plunge your hand into that and there are needles in it, it's too late, so you've, you know. In the midst of the chaos, there are some sad reminders of happier days. Sadly, it's all kids' stuff. No, it's just uh, been left. Yeah, I mean, there's another, another photo album there. Yeah, which is personal photographs. People's history, they just... Don't seem to want to keep it. It's just been left. Sad, really. There we are. Andy and his assistant have seen enough. The next time they're here, it will be in force. We'll get the clearance team in and uh, let them deal with that lot. Commercial waste is subject to landfill tax at £14 per tonne, which is one of the reasons fly tipping is a countrywide social problem. Here in Lewisham, one of the most popular materials to be tipped is tyres. This unsightly collection has been dumped overnight and reported this morning. Now a clean team arrives, led by Phil Fighter Scott. Not the mildest of winters we've uh, experienced, is it? Global warming. Well, there is one way to keep warm. Right, we're ready to start throwing these on. Unscrupulous traders are saving themselves thousands of pounds by dumping here. This isn't rare at all. It's probably maybe two, three times a week around here. Same, same amount of tyres every few days. But why do they do it here? Basically, all the easiest. Something like this is out of the way. Kick the gate, drive in, tip, drive out. Yeah. 
But, as I say, keeps us in work. Keeps you fit. Then it's got. Oh. Yeah. Young ties. Especially with snow on them, they're heavy. Mm -hmm. Scott isn't surprised by the morning's haul. Well, tyres are expensive to get rid of, so it's easier for people to dump them here for nothing and get us to take them away. So, that's half the problem. A large amount of tipping is committed by people who simply can't be bothered to take their rubbish to the local tip. But it seems whoever did this knew what they were doing. Well, there's no evidence here. So, basically, no chance. While the traders go on fly tipping, the taxpayer goes on paying. You, you just have to clear it. Otherwise, the kids will set them alight and wallop. At the end of the day, it's a job. You know, and you know, it's, we all have to do something. You know, kids have to feed. You know, we all need some money, so it's a good job. Keeps you healthy. Get used to it. That's going to be it, isn't it? About 80% of used tyres are recycled into the building trade, and thanks to Scott and his team, this lot will be recycled too. That's it. All done. Job done. Off to the next one now. Eh? That's the fly tip tyres dealt with, but there's been a report of a second tipping nearby. at the vacant council house in Gloucester. An extreme clean team has arrived and they're men on a mission. It's Friday afternoon and here comes the weekend. The house is full of rubbish and it's all got to go. But there's not enough time to finish the job today. The lads have got to prioritise. There's one area that just won't wait, the kitchen. The rotting foodstuffs in here are hardly going to get better with age. After a kitchen blitz, it's fit for some new bits. We've done the kitchen out. We know there's no food, nothing left in here, so it's not going to be bad when we come back Monday morning. We're off down the yard now and try and get rid of it. Well, get rid of it the best we can now. Start with empty van again on Monday morning and um, do exactly the same again. The team call it a day because their weekend starts now. Tommy Loftus is the pride of Preston, a litter picker who goes above and beyond the call of duty. Nobody is better equipped than Tommy for the job he does. Two-way radio for keeping in contact with my, my team. Here, I carry uh, still camera for taking photographs of the flight tip and other things which I think should be brought to the, the authorities. Here is a, is a little toolkit. Any damage to any of the locks on the, the bins, I, I can sort it out normally there and then. A knife for cutting down fly, fly posters. Also, a set of scales for weighing bags. No bag has been put out by the office. Any office or business should weigh more than 10 kilograms. And in this one here, more tools, plus the paperwork for issuing fixed penalty notices. Of course, you've got the, the main thing is the head camera, which is not on permanent, it just has it when I think it's required. If I choose or need to issue a fixed penalty, I've now got evidence of the person dropping that litter. Tommy approaches his job in the same way he approached his former career. When you're a soldier, you obviously, you have to take everything with you because you can't go back with it. And that's where it's all come from. You've got to have your knife and fork, make sure you've got that, your mess tins for eating, you know. But you carry your ammunition, you carry your first aid kit, you carry your waterproofs, you know, you carry a rifle cleaning kits, you know. Most cases, you go in battle, you can't go back with it. And that's sort of, that's led on to me the way I am now. Good evening, Tom. Yeah, see you, Steve. Sometimes for Tommy, it feels like he's still at war, especially when he gets a call like this. Yeah, I just had a call that uh, Chew Alley is, uh, is in a mess with uh, needles and bottles. I'm just going up to see it to clear it. It's one of the favourite spots for the, the homeless and the drug addicts to take, to take the drugs. 
So we have to clean it out quite regular, practically every day nowadays. Tommy's response is rapid as he alters his course and heads for Needle Alley. Coming up, the dish of the day. Mainly, I do Frank Lampard doubles, so I get to meet some uh, rich and famous people. Not that I've got their money, but... <laughs> Lieutenant Litter Preston Tommy recalls a close shave. It was uh, one time I said when I was in the army, I was sacked by an alligator. Nearly had my head and my helmet as well. <laughs> then reveals the truth about his favourite hobby. Also a hobby of mine is actually collecting dolls. There's a very old doll. I'm going to get round to repair it one day. I've got the head somewhere. In Lewisham, the clean-up team are responding to another report of fly tipping. They're on the front line of filth fighting, and for Scott, it can be a thankless task. When I first started here, I couldn't believe some of the things or, or the way people were dumping, the way people look at us as well doing this job. Tend to look down their noses at us um, for doing the job we do. But if it wasn't for us doing the job we do, could you imagine the state of uh, what, <laughs> imagine the state of the place then? You know what I mean? Without Scott and filth fighters like him, the place might look like this filthy scene in the Lewisham back street. Yes, it's another job for Scott and the lads. Well, right, still no way to look at this fly tip. You can have a look, see what people have left here for us. Yep, you can see, nice sofa, mattress. Other sorted of bits of furniture. This dead-end road has been carefully chosen by the fly tippers. This time, they've dumped the contents of a house. All right, guys, there's for us. See, it's brightened up for you now, Steve. Oh, no. Another one for the beer. Rain, snow or shine, for these lads, it's a life of grime. How many council workers does it take to load a sofa? Two? No, three, apparently. But why is it all here? A lot of people, they they pay a, like a company for house clearances, so they get the money. <coughs> and the force of this is what they do. Instead of tipping it and spending money, yeah. tip it on the streets. This down to us. Not so much buy one, get one free. More fly one, get a load for free. See it, another job done. Another job done. For Scott, it's enough to have a job and do it to the best of his ability. We've done some good work today, so hopefully there should be some uh, pleased, happy people out there. In Preston, Tommy Loftus has been called to a filthy alley. This is, it should actually be re renamed Drug Alley because that's all it's used for. People, very few people walk through here because of the needles, and so people won't use this alley at all. Not only is this job dirty, it's also dangerous. Why would Tommy do it? When I came out of the army, I, could, I couldn't have a job inside. I applied for this job, street clean, cleansing bomb, uh, three times. I was turned down, but he said I was overskilled or overqualified for the job. But I, I persevered, and after three years, I eventually got into the job. And I, I never looked back since. I've been here seven years, and I enjoy every minute of it. Tommy heads off to another notorious drug user's haunt. Just down there, up to two, two weeks ago, that was all bushy. And he's been, at one point, uh, about five weeks ago, I picked up 60 needles. He'd stick the needle in between a fork, you know, so it's pointing towards you. So if you were watching, you will walk into it. But Tommy has faced worse than the toxic tactics of Preston drug addicts. There was uh, one time I said when I was in the army, I was attacked by an alligator. What it was, we'd be patrolling through, through the jungle and we came to a, a stream, so we decided to fill our water cans up. 
I just said I went to pump, fill my water can up. A friend of mine was behind me. He spotted the eyes of the alligator. I just said, as he pulled me back, he said, mouth open. <laughs> Nearly had my head and my helmet as well. <laughs> I was also, when I was in the desert, a scorpion in my sleeping bag, bit me big toe. Bitten by a spider in South America. You know, it's all part of the job. I'm not the only one. Lots of people get injured and bit by different things. Rashes, you know, all kinds of things. Litter, litter everywhere, and not a spot unpicked, thanks to Tommy Loftus. Like I said, I really enjoy it. I've been here seven years now, and you wouldn't think that the jobs I've already done that I'd want to push you by, but I really enjoy it. You know, brilliant job. Litter comes in all shapes and sizes, and today it's L for large. They've had a report via our switchboard about an abandoned vehicle, so we as officers are here to assess it. Lewisham Council Enforcers John and Steve are first on the scene. Well, obviously, the vehicle's been here for a period of time. As you can see, the dirt build up under the tyres. Uh, it's got a smashed window here, and obviously, just checking that the doors are open. Therefore, this vehicle will deem to be hazardous. So therefore, we will put a notice on it and remove it instantly. Research has found that the presence of abandoned vehicles encourages crime and increases the fear of crime. If we don't remove it, someone could steal it and blow it up on the estate, causing further damage. But before the legwork comes the paperwork. So these forms are basically just, I'll put the registration of the vehicle, uh, the make, the model, the colour. Satisfied the car has been abandoned and the owners can't be traced, John and Stephen prepare for its removal. But it isn't always this straightforward. I do get grief, uh, but you know you generally are able to deal with things. Uh, if someone comes out being aggressive, then we'll walk away. There's another, always another day to catch them. Right. So that's, that's the way we work. Yeah. We don't fight them. <laughs> We're not allowed. <laughs> when John isn't dishing the dirt on Lewisham litter, he can be a bit of a dish himself. I, I do football doubles. I did do a Gerard double, which was really funny, just because of the body, but they had to put a wig on me, and it was brilliant. <laughs> but uh, mainly, I do Frank Lampard doubles, which is very good, so I get to meet some uh, rich and famous people. Not that I've got their money, but <laughs> I'm just a double. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's good, it's good fun. And Steve isn't about to be outdone in the soccer stakes. I coach a football team on a Sunday under 16s. There's a lot of competition. Um, a lot of competition with the parents and mums and dads as well, if, if it doesn't go their way. Funny enough, this Sunday, we saw an old lady running on with a brolly, going to hit one of the members of the other opposite team's family. And uh, the game got stopped, so we carried on as normal and uh, I won. <laughs> But now it's time to take this unloved jalopy to its final resting place. Sadly, there's no rescue home for abandoned cars, at least not in this borough. Now that vehicle will go into the pound and will be destroyed. It seems some people just won't learn. Definitely got to go and get a bacon sandwich and a cup of tea. <laughs> No skiving, obviously. Go. <laughs> we go and bring the paperwork back to the office and then go home. See the wife and kids. Tommy Loftus is the pride of Preston, a litter picker who faithfully fulfills his grimy duties in the streets of the town he loves. For this old soldier, it's not all work and no play. In fact, Tommy's got a whole room dedicated to his hobbies. You're in my famous workshop. Uh, everything happens in this workshop, and I love it. Whenever my wife's working, I spend most of his spare time in the workshop. Tommy loves to mend things, and sometimes he even creates new things from old. If it's possible to make it or fix it, I'll, I'll, I'll have a go at it. I just if I can get my other, my other working shoes, so it won't be a minute. For Tommy, his workshop is more than a bolt hole, more than a storeroom. It's a sanctuary. It's where I can relax. I find I'm very relaxed in here. I have no, no worries. I shut out the rest of the world to come in here. The grandchildren come, and they love to come in here and read all the books that I collect for them. His workshop may be full to the rafters, but Tommy's no hoarder. 
everything has its place and its use. All these cases have got something that the children can use. I also collect old books. I'm a collector of everything. Paints, cable for every type of job, lights, fittings, paper that, that the children might need for, for drawing, old electrical items which, are, which I've been repairing. Also a hobby of mine is actually collecting dolls. I've got hundreds of these dolls. They're a very old doll. I'm going to get round to repair it one day. I've got the head somewhere. <laughs> That's about all there is in, in this place. When Tommy isn't collecting children's toys and books, he's usually indulging in another hobby. One of my main hobbies is making lamps. Just make it as people ask me for them. They're mostly friends. I, I first started this in 1969. I became a street lighting engineer. And I, no I noticed that lots of people were interested because every time we pull the old cast iron lamp out, people are asking us for them. So I thought, well, I'll try, to, try it myself and see can I... Uh, make these lamps, and that's what's got me into it. This is actual base. Starting life on. Starting life as a, an old ballard. And I spend a lot of time in scrapyards. And that's where I pay a lot of my material from, from the scrapyards. Tommy's creativity is appreciated by others, and he now has a growing clientele for his lamps. I find it very th therapeutic. I mean, the job of you, don't get me wrong, the job of, the job of you, I... Uh, in the street cleansing. I really like that job as well, because that's one of the most interesting jobs I've ever had, really. This way, a little bit here, a bit there, keeps me interested. Keeps your mind active as well. You don't become a uh, couch potato sitting in front of the television. If there's one word that explains Tommy's happiness, it's gratitude. I am very lucky the way life turned out. I've got three smashing children. I've got five brilliant grandchildren. Of course, I've got my wife that's always supporting me and all the time. You know, I couldn't ask for more. I'm not rich, and I'm not exactly poor, but, you know, I'm quite happy and quite comfortable. Wouldn't want it any other way.